Well, welcome to the old classic car channel. Now, today hadn't meant to be a tinkering day, but it appears to be one now. I fired up the little Ford before and I noticed that it wasn't running particularly well. When I lifted the bonnet up, I don't know how well we can see this, there are remains of petrol everywhere. Fuel was flooding out from, well, basically everywhere, all over the manifold, down onto the exhaust, which is, is never a great thing. So, first thing to do is whiz off the float chamber. Two bolts hold that on. And there are two main reasons for a car rotor to flood like this. One is the needle valve, which is under here. And basically, there's a small valve which shuts off. When the float, when the fuel goes into the float chamber and the float rises, the float pushes against the needle valve up here, which I'll try and video in a minute and that turns off the supply of fuel into the carburetor so that it can't flood. Now sometimes these stick, they stick open and it floods the carburetor. I'll try and show what the needle valve looks like now. I don't know if that came out, but basically there's a little brass valve in here and you can ping it up and down and this is the float this is the float chamber that comes off and there's the float inside the brass now the problem is this float is no longer a float let's just get out, get out of the sun so there's there's petrol in here and this float should be floating on top of it but it's not it's sat at the bottom what I think's happened is the float has developed a leak and it's probably filled up with petrol and is no longer floating up and switching off the needle valve which sits here. So let's have a look at this uh, float, chain, uh, float and just see if that's full of liquid. I don't know if you can hear this but I'll, there's the float, I'll give it a shake and just see if we can hear anything inside. Yep, that's full of fuel so that's quite heavy actually. It shouldn't be like that at all, so I won't put that straight on the ground, I'll put it on my trusty boot. That's the inside of the float chamber, and obviously like I say, as soon as that fills up with fuel, this rises up, and that dimple there pushes on the needle valve, and that stops the flow of fuel coming in. But if this isn't floating, that just stays at the bottom down there, the fuel just carries on pouring in, this fills up, overfills, boom, floods everywhere. So I think I need to go and see if I can find a float that actually floats. I can even hear it hissing. So now that it's in the sun, the liquid in there is probably hissing out but when I shook that you could definitely hear fuel inside it so let's go and see if I can find another float right I've had a quick look around now I have got some Ford spares stashed away somewhere but they're not very easy to get at but I did find this old Zenith carburetor which is off a pop or an E83W or something like that so let's whiz the float chamber off and just see if there's a float inside there. If there is, I'll give it a test with some fuel. If not, I'll have to keep on looking. Oh, well, let's see if there's a float in here. You never know. But at least it's a nice day, I'm not in a rush to get anywhere. So let's see if there's anything inside this old Zenith that's usable. Of course the float, if there is one, this one might be punctured as well. The Usually, if they're going to give way, it's their join where they're joined together, silver soldered together. They can often, and there has to be a tiny pinhole, but over time they fill up. Right. <coughs> so there's the, well, this carburetor's off. There's the needle valve that I was talking about. So as the float rises up, it pushes that and blocks the fuel flow. And as the fuel gets used, focus as the fuel gets used the float goes down that little valve opens fuel pours in float rises 
that closes it off again. So that's how the needle valve and the top of the Zenith carburetor. Like I say, these were fitted on Ford Pop 103Es, the E83W vans, and of course this Anglia. So let's put that to one side because I don't need that. And this is the float chamber for the donor carburetor. And there is a float. So we need to see, focus, we need to see if this one will actually float or not. If I put fuel in here, let's see if that rises up or if it sits there. And if it sits there, it means that that's got a puncture as well. So let's go and find a drop of fuel, give it a go. Right, I've got my trusty container of fuel. <laughs> So, let's pour this in and see whether she floats or sinks. Right, it appears to float. Let's just try it. So if I push it all the way to the bottom of the float chamber and let go, it floats back to the top. Of course it could still have a leak in there there's a tiny pinhole that will take a little while to fill it with fuel. So the initial signs are promising but it doesn't prove that it doesn't leak at all. So I think what I'll do is I'll leave that for a little while, go and have a cup of coffee, come back to it and just see if it's still floating. If it is I'll tip it out and just have a shake of it just to see if there's any fuel sounds inside the float itself. If not then that tends to suggest that it's not leaking so I'll put that back in the car instead of the leaky one and then we'll try running it again it was running very erratically and it, it didn't want to run at all really this morning which made me think there was something up and as soon as I popped the bonnet up and I saw fuel flooding everywhere it was time to have a look inside the carburetor but fingers crossed this old one will do the trick but like I say until I've left it for a little while I won't know for sure that it's leak free so come back in a little while. Now while this is off, this is the float chamber off the car and if I have a look inside here in the base <clears throat> there's actually a fair bit of muck in there so while this is off I may as well give it a clean and down here are the two jets I'm not sure if you can see those there we go those are the two jets so they can be unscrewed so while I'm cleaning the bottom of the float chamber out I may as well remove those and just give them a quick blow through just to make sure they're all clear and put it back together. But yeah, it just makes sense while this is apart. There's actually quite a lot of claggy muck in there. So probably old fuel, blah, blah, blah. Because obviously the car had been sitting for a long time before being recommissioned. So let's give that a quick blast with the carburetor cleaner. And see what we've got. Yeah. I'll just give that a bit of a sluice around. I've got a brush here just to disturb all the clag at the bottom. onto there. <coughs> very absorbent these weekly classic car newspapers, very useful. It's getting there. Let's put a bit more in. We'll just keep going at that for a little while until it's nice and clean. These jets in the base simply unscrew as you can see they've got a flat on them so you can unscrew them. Now other carburetors I've seen, the bolts that hold the float chamber on actually have a square on the bottom and there's sometimes these jets have a square on them and the, the base of the bolt that holds this together can be used to remove the jets but in this case a simple flat bladed screwdriver does the job. So we'll take those out they're different sizes so they can't be put back in correctly fortunately so we'll whiz those out like I say this is the same on the Ford Pop 
103E, the Ford Prefect, the Sit Up and Beg Prefect, uh, the E83W van, the 500 weight van, all those Fords and Fordsons have the same basic Zenith carburetor on them. So there's the, the small of the two jets, so we'll just give that a quick blow through. There we go. I couldn't actually see through it, but may have just had a bit of the carburetor cleaner in it rather than any dirt, but best to be better safe than sorry. So that's the beauty of these things. They were designed to be taken apart and fixed as the larger of the two. Let's just blow through that. Right. So you can actually see through that. I don't know if the camera will pick that up. There you go. So that's nice and clear. Sometimes if a car won't run at all, you whiz these jets out and you find that there's a bit of claggy old muck in there and you simply blow them through. There's a small one. You simply blow them through. And normal service resumes. So that's quite encouraging. You can see there's little fibre seals in there. So I'll just give these a bit more of a clean through and that can be drying. And we'll leave it a little bit longer and check that replacement float and just see if it's going to do the job. Like I say, I hadn't planned on doing a tinkering video today, but you can never plan these failure to proceed moments. So, like I say, it's a nice day. I'm not actually going anywhere today, so why not have a little tinker outside? The sun's out, the rain has stopped, so that's great. So make the most of it, I think. The little Anglia hasn't run for probably a couple of weeks since I fixed the, the blowing exhaust downpipe, which you may have seen a video about. There are quite a few videos about the little Anglia on here now, so if you've not caught up with those yet, please check out the rest of the channel. And you can see all about that and other various things that I'm fiddling with on and off, including the big Dodge truck, the Model AA truck, the Morris 8, and of course there's the Talbot which is no longer with us, but the videos remain. That was a fantastic car. Right. That's okay, so I'll just clean that, let, dry that out a little bit. The jets can go back in, and we'll leave it a little bit longer and just see if that float is still floating or not. Exciting times. This turned up recently, it's a grinding wheel. I found it on the floor at a local sale. When I cleaned it up, it revealed this lovely old badge on it. From the Niagara number one, the Carborundum Co of Niagara Falls. The hardest and the sharpest. So that was a good result, so I just cleaned up all the old claggy grease off it. Whipped out the oily rag, which is good to go. Of course it should be clamped the other way around on this bench. Because that wants to be on this side so you can get at it, but just to look nice. It'll do just there. Okay, that's the jets replaced in the bottom of the float chamber. So, let's go and have a look at that float, see how it's doing. Okay, well that's been left for about 10 minutes, and it appears to still float, which is, which is a very good thing. So I think next thing I'll do, I'll pour this fuel back into my little tin, and I'll have a look at the float chamber and just make sure there's no sound of any fuel leaked inside it. But that appears to be quite promising. Yeah, the joys of old cars. But this is all part of it. Again, this just emphasises how important it is, or how much easier life is, if you have old stuff lying around, like this old carburetor. Fortunately, I came across that one. There are some others somewhere, and I think this has highlighted the fact that it's all very well having spare parts around, but unless you know where they all are, they're not a great deal of use when something goes wrong. So I think sooner rather than later, I'll have a route through and get all the full parts together. Because um, 
years ago I used to run an E83W pickup and I amassed quite a few par spare parts and I hung on to most of them and as m the engine parts are common to the E83W and the Anglia and so on I, you know, they'll come in, you know, come in useful for the Anglia so let's get this let's just empty this off into here hopefully most of it goes back in do. Try not to get too much fuel on me, because that's never good. Put that back on there before I spill it everywhere. Right. So let's have a look at this float. And just have a listen. Right, if I shake that near the microphone on the camera now. I can't hear any fuel in there at all now. So that's quite a good sign. So I think this is probably okay, or at least I'm happy enough with it to at least give it a try. I will have a look around and find, see what other floats I've got around and put them sort of somewhere safe in case I need them. But I think this one will do certainly for testing. So I can put this into the original float chamber over there, pop it back on the car and just see if the big fuel leak has been cured or not. Right, let's get that bolted back on. It's only two bolts. You'll note that the float chamber has a top written on it for good reason. So, carefully put that back in without damaging the uh, needle valve which sticks down below the lid here. We'll just have to Use that back in and slide it across. And we get the bolts. And we whiz it all back together, hopefully. This is the typical sort of roadside repair that you might make while running a classic car or a vintage car like this. Especially cars that don't get used very often. Sometimes sediment and muck builds up in the fuel system and drags its way through and either blocks the needle valve or one of the jets or like in this case the float simply starts to leak and no longer floats any of those issues leads to little repairs like this which hopefully will cure the problem right. so I've got my trusty 7 16th spanner so let's nip that up this is only very soft metal so you don't tighten it up very tightly at all. Okay. Now the, the uh, mechanical pump has got a priming lever on it so that manually pumps up fuel through the pump into the float chamber. Let's give that a go. I can hear the fuel going in now. Yeah. Right. It stopped gurgling, so that suggests that the float chamber is full and the needle valve has shut off, thanks to the float, which is floating, I think. So let's see if it'll start. With my brew, I'll we'll spill that. Well, that sounds a lot happier than before all the top of the carburetor, there's just fuel pouring over that and dropping down onto the exhaust which is never a good thing like I said the exhaust manifold is directly below the carburetor so if this starts pouring fuel out it all drops onto a red hot exhaust which can be quite exciting but there's no fuel pouring out it's running quite smoothly So that, I think, has cured 
the overfueling problem. A fairly simple fix, but if you if you just carry on, and if that had carried on pouring fuel out and you were going down the road and then that exhaust had got to the point where it was really hot, it could get a little bit exciting. So I'll just leave that to run for a little while. But I think that's okay now. I have to make sure that that old float that leaks doesn't get mixed in with all the spare parts which are believed to be good because I don't want to be putting it back in again. Yeah, I'm very happy with that now. If you like these tinkering videos, please keep an eye on the channel. There'll be plenty more like this along very soon. Thanks for watching.